<laughs> you are listening to Offy Mag Radio. Offy Mag. Live from Rare Kind Records. Um, it's first of a new series. Our first radio of this year. Uh, of, of this year? Of this year, full <laughs> stop, to be honest. I am doing that like dry jan, I swear. Yeah. I'm slurring my slurps, but. <laughs> um, I am not. Yeah, we got a special very guest. very wet January. Uh, <laughs> we got our first ever cover star to do our first ever podcasty interview That's radio right, thing. Yeah. You've yeah. Facts. Full circle. <laughs> full circle moment. Um, I'll do your intro. Usually in print, I like ask people to introduce themselves to their own words because sometimes I get a, like a little fact that I, that I didn't already know. But this is radio. This is not print. Uh, so, you know, I'm here with Lee Scott, rapper, producer, mm-hmm. author, label owner, Runcorn resident. Yep. Liverpool uh, fan. Yeah, <laughs> correct. Um, um, what else can I do? You got anything else? Um, I'm a... I've been uh, driving a like a sit on mower a lot lately. Jeez. <laughs> that, <laughs> is, that, that is like, character throw defining. That's throwinable. That is definitely throwinable. Yeah. That is character mm-hmm. character defining. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, thanks for coming down. I really appreciate yeah, it. You're welcome. Good Anytime. to see you. You too, man. Ooh, Ooh. Just chucking me notes around. Um, yeah, I. What I like about this new format we got is we got a lot of time. Um, so sometimes in print, you know, you might want to hop into like questions about recent music people have released but right here mm-hmm. i can start right at the top mate and you've been speaking about it a lot already which is which is great and that's about uh the town that you uh like grew up in yeah um so like for people who don't know about Runcorn, like what is it what's it like what is it it's a yeah it's cool man it's a it's a nice place Um you should visit sometime <laughs> i've been man family. i've been yeah. Well, I actually, I didn't get off the train. I was on my way to Liverpool. <laughs> I saw it. I saw the big, uh, like, Mr. Burns nah, so looking uh, power I don't know plant. If that that's not where I'm from, though. Like, Is it not? That's called, that's the wrong call Old Town. Okay. If I'm being very honest, I probably went there maybe a handful of times during my, enti- like, my entire life. That was kind of like a different section. Mm. So, like, the there's, Runcorn obviously has been a place, you know, for a long time. I don't know how long, but uh, the new town was built in the 70s. So mm. it's like just, uh, it was built to house the overspill from Liverpool um, and over surrounding areas, mostly Liverpool. And yeah, that's where my family prior to me, they're all from Liverpool until mm. you trace them back to Ireland or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then I was raised in, I was the first one to not be raised in Liverpool. You know okay, what I, mean? I see. I, yeah, because like, the chain, you know what I, mean? I think like historically in your career, how many times do you reckon you've been referred to as like a Liverpool rapper? Uh, many times, yeah. I used to correct me. Look, you know what it is because uh, anyone listening from them areas will know what I'm talking about. But it, I can't I, if I if I come out and and, st- and start shouting like, "Yeah, I'm from Liverpool," they'll be like, "Plastic Scouser and all this." Whoa. So I just embraced it, like you know what I mean. Because at the end of the day, whatever. My mm. family go back like a hundred years. So at the end, of the, <laughs> I'm probably I'm like a, a fucking cold steel Scouser at the end of the day, but. You know, I grew up around a, down a down the road, so I'm a woolly back. Yeah, so like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm half a wool in it because that's what they call you. That's what the old the older guys used to call people like me. You know what I mean? What color are your bins? Exactly, me bins are not purple. There you go. But yeah, I moved I moved from Runcorn when I was like when I was 15, innit? That I haven't lived there since I was 15, but. Less but you still rep it though, innit? Which yeah, I like, like because yeah. I know I, a lot I, of people. That's, you know, that's where where I was built. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. <laughs> Sick. You got it. You know, you got it. What, uh, what am I gonna do? What was it like, sort of like accessing music and uh, like rap music, I mean, particularly? Man, this is the thing. It's the, it, but it wasn't easy. You know, what yeah. I mean, there wasn't a record shop. You know, the, the I think like the closest thing we had to a record shop was like Woolies, Woolworths. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like that was oh, it. Shit, yeah. They forgot they used to sell records. That's mad. Yeah, mate. yeah. And, and uh, then me mate's house. He used to have Sky, so I used to just watch the all the whatever it was. I mean, I said MTV and all that. You know, there mm. would be whatever rap was on. You know what I mean? I mean, I always loved rap from when I was a little kid. Like, it, but I, I've said this before. I probably, I, you know, if, if you know, I've never, I, I haven't said it on an off license <laughs> magazine podcast though. But um, I think like it's one of them. It, it, it's like hip hop music has just been there you know what I mean it's mm. been on everything if you I just that's what I uh, sort of honed in on as a, from a child I mean it was the 
the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie theme song. I've said that before, but I was about I mean, to say, it's like, just the truth. It was uh, like, kind of an era. Was five. Yeah, like in like the early 90s and like mid 90s, mm. there was a lot of like um, hip hop in like adverts and stuff. Everything. It was Everything. very different yeah. to what it became in like the early 2000s, where it was like yeah. more overly glamorized and obviously targeted at adults. They started yeah, yeah. using hip hop to kind of advertise to kids and shit, right? Exactly. And it's not like um, everyone around my area was into it either. I just, for some reason, that's just what uh, got me straight, like right from in, from young though. You See, know what I mean? And then like, you know, everybody do the Bartman. It was in yeah, everything, yeah. Innit? like the, everything. It was all like rap music, you know. And then I just took it from there. I think like my first like rap superhero was Ice-T. You Is know it? what I mean? I okay. think, yeah, that, that's what I remember anyway. You know what I mean? Uh, just like, I remember a, a, a rap, an, a nice T album getting passed around a few of me mates. And I think, it, I can't remember which one it was. It might be the one with the white cover with the big gun and the girl mm. with the big ass. <laughs> it might be that one. Wait, I never remember the intro right. where he's like, if you're offended uh, 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 by words like, and then just lists. List of obscenities. Which as a kid, that's as absolute a kid, gold, right? Exactly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's exactly so, what you want to listen to, isn't it? For yeah. sure. And I think me, Matt, I had a really young mom and she never really like bothered to sort of police what I was listening mm. to. So, you know what I mean? I just listened to fucking gangster rap from like six, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> just, yeah. And like, at what point then did you start thinking like, I might have a go at this myself? Um, like, I mean, I think I probably tried to like write, uh, like, I think I tried to write like New Jack Swing style R and B type joints, you know what I mean? When I was a little kid, um, I like tried to. I wanted to be a break dancer when I was little, you know what I mean? Because like a couple of when I moved, I moved from this place called Halton Brook. It'll mean nothing to you. It's like one of one of one of the estates. There's like seven estates in Runcorn. Mm. I, I I was born in Halton Brook on this street called Brackendale, and then it was going to be demolished. So we had to move to another place called Castlefield. I just remember there was these two twins. I even remember the names John and Paul, and they used to break dance. And I would see them break dancing and that. So I was like, and I, I'd seen it on, on telly and that. And I tried to do it in the living room, but I didn't know people that could actually, you know, people could actually do it in mm. real life, you know what I mean, around me. So I was like, oh, so that's what I wanted to do when I was a little. And then I guess the years went by, I was just fascinated with how can you, how do you make music, you know what I mean? And then I was writing a little thing. I, I, I figured, I think the first time I figured out how to record myself was on my mate Jed's. Um, like boombox with the built-in mic mm -hmm. and we used to just like he was he was like just great at, at robbing basically so he, he would just swear to god he would like i don't even know how old we are at this point we're in primary school still so 10 11 and then he would go to like woolies and he would like any rap tape that had an instrumental on it mm. like one of the first ones was coolio fantastic voyage instrumental we like we like wrote raps about like killing fucking bugs bunny and that and you know what i mean and <laughs> Yeah, said it in like mad American accents. You know what I mean? Like, as you would when you're a kid and you don't know nothing else. That I've been basically, I've been trying to figure it out since I was little. Mm. And I was just like, how do you put your voice into this thing? Like, yeah, it's yeah. alien to you. It's completely alien, isn't it? When, sure. you're, when you're little, but just, be, yeah, to answer the question in short, like, I just, I've been trying to do it since I can remember. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and uh, I know, like, obviously throughout the years, we've interviewed a lot of hip hop artists from England. Mm. And that first hurdle, it seems like for a lot of people, at least from a certain era, was like finding their voice, actually being yeah. like comfortable with their accent yeah. and stuff. Um, which kind of brings me on to like the wider kind of Merseyside thing. Like, yeah, yeah. L not yet. Well, I mean, aside from yourself, and you've got some amazing names, I'm sure, but like, uh, like Liverpool isn't like a city that people. No, kind of think is uh, like synonymous with hip hop for whatever yeah. reason. I mean, it it it, it probably should have been like, mm. but it was kind. of, It's just one of them cities, isn't it? It's like people like always say to me, "Oh yeah, this, it's, it's the, the city music. There's so much good music." And I'll be like, "Name someone that isn't the Beatles." Then. I was about and to never say, do you know what I mean? Oh, like, uh, but it's one of them. Uh, it's a weird John city Lennon. Because it really, <laughs> it's kind of overlooked in a way, other than the Beatles. You know mm. what I mean? But mm. like, um, but I mean it, it's. To, to what you were saying there about like getting comfortable with the accent if mm. i'm being honest i don't even think i became really comfortable with the accent until i was like nearly 30 or something you know really because I, I would always flick it in, in and out you know what mm -hmm. i mean like it's hard because i when i would write and on the page it would sound kind of different to how you know what i mean i would sure. read it and i used to always uh, to other people they don't think that in it mm. but to me in my in my head I, I used to think oh it sounds like i'm reading 
You know what I mean? That's how it always sounded to me. Not people would be like, what the fuck are you on about? But that's how it sounded to me. And so I, I just started to not write as much, like punch, just sit and punch in and you know what I mean? And then like whatever, but yeah, it, I guess it took, a, it took a while, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of guys now that really have got like, a grip on it, you know, because mm. my accent is kind of a, a mishmash anyway. Sure, I, I grew up in on a street with like people my age were like Manx and Woolly Backs and a few Scousers, mm. you know what I mean? But yeah, so it's a bit, and then I've moved about a lot since I was fi- since I was like fifteen or whatever. So yeah, man, I don't know. But yeah, it so should like, be. yeah, I mean, um, I know you've got a few records. Well. At least one cooking uh, the books. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've already heard some uh, like cooking the books. <laughs> if you've uh, like listened to the full version of this show, which is available on Mixcloud and YouTube, with the one little ta- with the one little bit, which is Mad Scouts, where he goes, "It's an old show." <laughs> 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 Honestly, sounded like you were on it. Yeah, it was, well, it, it, it was a mad thing. Yeah, I mean, it is no joke. Really. But uh, what can you tell us about these guys? Yeah, FIC first in command. I mean, this is th- this is what I'm saying. I, I didn't hear this growing up. Mm. To be honest, it wasn't accessible. Mm. You know what I mean. Yeah. So it was released in '95, but I, because I know the guys, like it was recorded from in '93, '94, and I guess at this point in time, the only way people would um, like even put out a record was through a label. Was you know people went independent like that back then. So I think that when they when their album didn't get picked up properly, they just kind of deaded it. You know what I mean, and moved on or whatever. But um. Yeah, it's like it's. I, I discovered it in the early two thousands. Yeah. Like the my friend who used to be in Children of the Damned was called Carlos the Jackal, Big Carl. He was he's the nephew of one of the members of FIC. Did you say as well that it's, it's not that like, even the whole tape they just picked like, the it, best I, songs? I don't know. I, I haven't. I don't think it. I feel like it's not, but I could be mistaken. But I no, I don't think it is. You know, that's mad. Definitely, <laughs> it's not the full thing. I think the full thing would need to be a double disc. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then, um, yeah, I mean, this is early, ni- this is 93, 94. And these are full on like scousers from, all from Toki, like, um, shout out to Big Carl as well. He's the nephew of Mensa, who at this time, I can't remember what, what name he was going by. I think DJ might have been like Abyss or something. Fuck knows. I think that was his name back then. But uh, he's the guy who actually put out my first rec- my, like my first record. It was uh, me and Salah and right. Shakes, who used to be called Spiller. And this guy was the guy who released us first, like in 2005. Um, and yeah. yeah, man, if you want to play something off it, yeah, let's well, do yeah, it. well, yeah. I'd if say, um, I mean, man, ev- do you know what? Yeah, every song on this is is so good. Um, if you're listening uh, to the podcast, we're gonna have a little bit of the song, and then we will get back to some chat. Is that you listen to the full to version? Then you're about yeah. to hear some. Right. Let's go. First in command. We, are we uh, have done that right, yeah? I think so. DJ Itchy can't scratch in the house. <laughs> Let's go! Hi, Louis, I'm home. Sorry I'm late, but I've been out busy kidnapping rappers to make snuff movies. But I'm choosy of my victim, so I'm picking him in there. I'm giving him time to master rhyme before I hang him by his tongue. I take his teeth from his gums and rip his lungs from his chest. I leave him messed and lying in them pints of his own body fluid. So when I do it, I'll be doing it with precision. Cause my vision be as clear as countryside atmosphere. Crack his spear. Yeah, there yeah. Listen to Offy Mag Radio Life and Rare Kind. If you're listening to the podcast, you would have just heard a bit of a first in command. If you're listening live, you would have heard the whole goddamn thing. Courtesy <laughs> of Lee Scott sharing some Liverpool yeah, classic hip hop. Yeah, the project's called Pest Control. That was the title track from the project. Sick, man. L- thank yeah, you for uh, like bringing that in as well. Because, yeah, yeah. Y- yeah y- you definitely mentioned them in the issue one yeah, yeah. interview. And I don't think I did a proper deep dive. So when I'm you glad. pulled it out as well, it felt kind of like you just knew that this one was special. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's a lot of good songs on that, man. Like, a lot of good songs. Uh, I think in all honesty, uh, like, the Children of the Damn Brick Pelican mm. project, I, I like, I kind of credit to this a lot, you know. Mm. I, I kind of, this is was a big, like, play, a big influence on that album, mm. you know, but as far as the production goes, not, like, necessarily the rapping style, you know what I mean? But, that actually yeah. brings me on quite nicely because I like to speak about those Brick Pelican times uh, oh, yeah. uh, a little bit. So obviously, we haven't even spoken about Black Bly Records yet, to be fair. I guess it was just there in the background throughout, in a way. But um, obviously, Blast has been going for a long time now. Yeah. Was it, is it 2006? 2006, yeah. Um, and that Brick Pelican album, I believe, is like 2008, if I'm not mistaken. I was um, looking at it earlier. It's literally over here somewhere. Something like that, yeah. Um, 
those so, so um, like taking us back to those times when like you're essentially making rap music with your mates right yeah. and although some of the lyrical content can be quite kind of dark at times in yeah. like a almost in like a I wouldn't say a an ironic way, but there's a sense of humor there. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I always f- found it funny, you know. Exactly. Uh, it was only when other people would be like, oh, that's that's dark, and I'd be like, oh, I thought <laughs> that we were all like laughing yeah. at that, but it is what it is. I mean, that's what I was about to say, because um, I know when we started Offy Mag in the early years, it felt like we were just kind of running around with like cameras. It was having, that, pretty much. Having <laughs> fun. And now you're standing still. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which we, now yeah. there's loads of cameras. Which, but like, and they were really little. Yeah. The point I was <laughs> ab- trying to make was like we were just having fun, and the fact that we happened to produce a magazine at the end of it was almost like a bonus. Right. Was that a bit like what it was like in those um, early days of Blah? I mean, I guess technically, yeah, but I, I, I like that. Was, I, once I made the decision that that's what I was going. I mean, like I say, man, it's like I, I kind of was always trying to do that, so mm. I'd have been doing it no matter what, really. You know what I mean? Uh, did I? I, I don't, bro, it's such a mad question, like, it's a mad thing to answer because I don't know, like, the honest way in it, because I, I don't really, like, I never really, I'm not a dreamer, I don't really, like, think about the future or tomorrow mm. or anything like that, I just kind of, like, do what I'm doing when I'm doing it, and whatever happens, happens, do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not a very, uh, maybe not the best way to, well, to, to live life for some people, but... I'm not a guy that makes lists. I'm not a guy yeah. that plans. Makes pretty not, good music, though. You know do you know what I mean? mean? <laughs> if you're able like, to capture those like spells in your life. Yeah, but I mean, uh, yeah. I guess that I don't know. I had no expectations, but I, 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 all I wanted to do is to just be able to do that and not have to like work in a factory or whatever it may be. Do you mm. know what I mean? Or I don't know, like do something else, something eat more unsavory than that. Mm. You know, I just want. I, I just thought I want to make music and that be it you know mm. what i'm saying i've been like I, i'm making it i've self-employed off music since 2012 uh, the, uh, october the 31st shout out you that's that's sick happy halloween so that yeah was yeah do you have any like mad like memories from the sort of like early days making them tapes uh what like brick pelican yeah. And that? yeah i mean they they were always made in the, all all them albums were always actually the, well, the majority of all those early projects were made in my houses whatever i had I had like I lived above a pub from when I was like seventeen, like on my own. I am. Um, God, that's a dream when you're uh, like seventeen. <laughs> well, you know, if you knew the whole story behind it, it wouldn't be much of a dream. But <laughs> no, like, it was, it was <laughs> one of them. Like, you know, um, mad things were happening in life, and then I ended up in this. Uh, you know, like I, I, I ended up basically living above a pub. Mm. Uh, I I won't even get into it, but like yeah, it was just like a massive space. You could make noise it was up twenty four hours a day. Mm. It was quite, I used to call it the wrong house. Okay. It was just an utter like shambles, just equipment everywhere, like fair, you know, second third hand equipment, whatever. Like that's where we made we made a bunch of music. We pre children of the damned, you know what I mean? Mm. We made all like the anti heroes mixtape there and um bunch of other stuff and then children of the damn Tourette's camp we made some of the tunes there we made some of the, but then i moved um to a different part of liverpool i moved to where did i move uh, who knows but um we done a bunch of stuff in there in, in a some studio and then yeah just here there and everywhere but then brick pelican was all all recorded in like a room in a house that i lived in in garston liverpool in south liverpool mm-hmm. Uh, just all recorded in like a bedroom and like literally there's some tracks where you hear us like verse after verse we're literally just passing the mic like this you know what I mean and then what goes in Sick. goes in you know what I mean but yeah I mean I don't know man like uh, I can remember it all to be honest I've got quite a good memory for like things like that you know what I mean but just going through records with Sly Sly I just mm. went Sly was just first learning how to make beats mm-hmm. you know what I mean I'm just like we were just going through uh, he had like a really good ear for making beats and we were, you know, just uh, I think most of that Brick Pelican was sampled off like jazz, loads yeah. of jazz CDs and tapes. Like, and it wasn't sampling right? records at that point because I think I pawned me turntables. <laughs> like, and I didn't have the money to get them back. So I was just like, fuck. But I was just sampling cassettes at that point and CDs and stuff like that. You know what I mean? But it's like back then you couldn't, it was quite hard to get music on the internet like yeah, that. Yeah. So you were still had to, you know, you couldn't have go on YouTube, physical, yeah. get a fucking YouTube MP3 extracted True. or whatever. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. So yeah. like, what uh, like changed between like 2008 and 2012? Like, how did like 2012 sort of 
changed to be like the year that you're able to kind of do black records as like your profession i mean honestly it was just because i kept like i would got i would get a job quit and then go get get back on a dole or whatever yeah. and then in all honesty what happened was there, there was there was like a new initiative by the government which was essentially like force you into a fucking job like gunpoint you know what i mean and then I was just like, I was speaking to this advice. It was actually New Deal. Do you remember New Deal? Uh, it was a labor initiative. It was like, it was okay. called New Deal. So if you'd been on the job, if you'd been on Dole for like 12 months or, or 13, it was 13 months specifically, I think, weirdly. I don't know why 13, <laughs> unlucky number 13, I guess. But like, so what they did was they um, moved you from the job center to these like, f like de facto, like, um, I don't even know what they would be called, man. It was kind of like, an alternative to the to the jobby you know what i mean so you mm. would go in and they would like help you write a cv and do all these type of things and what happened was they moved so you was no longer officially on the doll so the numbers now rise so like oh we've we got so many you know like over overnight the employment yeah, yeah. The, the unemployment numbers went down because we were all just in the fucking office around the corner and my place was called peer temps it was called and basically during this time i was talking to this guy and he was just like, I was just like, one day I was like, you know what, fuck this. I make music and is there anything you've got like I can do where I'm doing that? And he was like, oh, you can you can actually be self-employed if you make. So I just pretended I was like making mad money. And I was like, yeah, well, you know, I'm making not mad money, but I'm like making enough like to not be doing this, but I don't know how to do it. So he just helped me become self-employed. And then I lived on fucking scrapings for like a mm. year. But I was just decided I was gonna do it, and that was it. I was like, "Fuck working in in these jobs." Some of the jobs I was working at then, I was just like, "Fuck this shit," you know what I mean? Mm. Like twelve hours just standing up, picking things up, and putting them in, putting them in a fucking pile. You know what I mean? I was like, couldn't be asked no more, man. So I preferred to just, yeah, scrape by, eat fucking Warburton's toast for breakfast, dinner, and tea. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Sick, no. So it wasn't because I would became successful yeah. or anything. Yeah. It was just like I was just like fuck that. I want to just make beats and record. Paid and it I from just the end. Kept mate. doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's um, the honest answer. <laughs> and then, but also like, um, kind of a like blah for me at least when I was first getting into it was kind of really connected to the actual records themselves. Like because underground hip hop. Uh, and maybe hip hop in a wider sense was still putting out quite a lot of uh, um, like vinyl records when maybe other independent artists weren't. Mm. So like, how important was that kind of like merch uh, like factor? Yeah, I, in, I, in the in the early days yeah. where, where, that we were doing it, it it was kind of everyone had decided collectively that vinyl was dead now. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like it wasn't even. I don't even if you remember. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even know how how old you guys are. <laughs> Would you? stunning mustache like but uh, <laughs> it could be could be 50 could be like <laughs> 25 I don't know. um yeah I, like 2006 and uh, i mean like i said this guy he pressed the vinyl in 2005 that was kind of like a mad thing like yeah. when he did that mm. i remember he actually had to go through some like competition to win funding to to press the record it was kind of yeah i mean i don't know what it was like for other people because you know i'm I, in 2005, I don't even remember how old I was, like early 20s, whatever. And I was just like, um, vinyl was just kind of like a, a mad thing to even, I, to be on, you know what I mean? Mm. Like I remember just playing it and just being like, all I wanted to do, I can't scratch with shit as you as you can see, but as you've seen before, <laughs> DJ you can't scratch, but I just remember just like, cutting me voice for hours, like, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was kind of like, from, from then on, 2005, I don't think I, uh, put another record out then for mad years oh, really? i think okay. it was 2000 and maybe like 12 or something like mm. that when I, I mean, we were doing cds and stuff yeah you know? yeah and then though like you guys must have went on just a mad run because yeah. there's so there's yeah. so many yeah. and they used to be sold out before you yeah, yeah. even got there as yeah. well that's it man i mean i started off just doing like i would just do like 100 records or something it was like kind of an experiment at first mm. you know what i mean i was like let's see because i had no idea where people were going to buy the vinyl you know what i mean i did yeah. it's not like i've done the market research you know what i mean <laughs> but yeah they just flew out and i was like oh so i was like okay cool and i just kind of built from there you know what yeah mean? man i mean i think it was a great man from uh like blackburn uh once said called uh bill shakes he said <laughs> the uh cult's, cult's massive, massive. <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah that was that, that wasn't practice. That was quite yeah, cool. Yeah, um, yeah, how does like sort of that like, maybe like like vinyl culture and stuff like that like feed into the whole like cultness of the cult? I mean, 
I don't know, man, but uh, I think like even when people were saying, like looking back now, and when people say, "Oh, vinyl is dead," it's like that was just a weird myth that these like old bitter <laughs> guys were saying. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like the same people who used to tell me they would be like, "Oh, well, you make you're making it like." They would kind of be like, why are you making rap for? You're stupid. We've already tried. I'm like, yeah, but <laughs> you in my opinion, I was just thinking, yeah, but you're not me though. Do you know what I mean? Like if I'm being honest, because I was just like, yeah, but you like once you went and like cared about like putting food on your plate and that. I just didn't give a fuck. Like I was like, right, I'm going to make music and that's it. Like there's nothing else that can stop me. You know what I mean? So I just had that extra like dedication to do it. And uh, I guess like, I don't know, man, vinyl and stuff. I think like hip hop, didn't abandon vinyl like other genres may have. They, they, they're back now, I tell you that. <laughs> yeah. And I know they're back because the, the the whole vinyl industry was backlogged for like two years. A day on Oasis, yeah. it, Mad annoying, man, because we were all pressing. We were still pressing records during COVID and that. And we were putting stuff out and, and, and whatever. And then COVID ends and it's like, yeah, sorry, um, we're backlogged by a year now because all the majors have just come back in because you just realize that they can still actually sell like a uh, product, mm. you know what I mean? So, but yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. I think uh, I just love vinyl. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah. And I've I've got I love it more as I've got older as well. You know what I mean? It was kind of annoying when I was when I was younger because I'd be moving a lot. So, mm. but yeah. you know, but yeah, I guess it plays a major part, really. You know what I mean? Sick in the whole label. I mean, um, <laughs> and I think uh, since last time we interviewed you. You've also become an author, mate. Yep. I think uh, I think you might have mentioned it. Like, so first time I interviewed you was like 2016 or 17. Right. I think you mentioned you were writing then. Did I, yeah? I, or you had an idea. Uh, maybe, yeah. But uh, hang on, I'm going to grab the books. I feel like, uh, like um, I don't know, like some kind of mid-90s TV show host. <laughs> <laughs> Although I feel like all of, all of them lot lie and say that they <laughs> kind of uh, bl uh, black read the book and their assistant actually read it, but yeah, I've read it, man. I've read it. You gave me a copy probably about a year ago, and it's sick, man. So nice congratulations. One. Yeah. Um, I guess I got a lot of questions about that. Really, the first thing is like, how did that? How did that come about? Like, how did you end up writing a um, novel and getting it like published? Because that's yeah, I mean, honestly, it's, uh, I mean, yeah, I've, I've, you know, I've done a bunch of these Q&As that I'll tell you about, you mm. know what I mean? And he asked me and that. It's just like, it's all just, I mean, I say it's a fluke in a way because basically some, an author on that label m emailed me one day and he was just like, yeah, um, listen to, he's older fella, like, and he was just like, listen to a lot of your, lot of your you know, yeah. songs and albums and whatever. And he was just like, have you ever written anything else? You know what I mean? Maybe mm. something that isn't effing and blinding on a beat in rhythmically, you know what I mean? I was like, yeah, yeah, it just so happens that I do, you know what I mean? And I have, and I, and, um, I showed them a bunch of stuff that I was like working on, just like little short stories. Usually I would turn them into songs. So like there's like a song on um, Stupid Poignant shit called like, I think it's called like The Dent, The Midget and The Parcel. And that was like a short story I'd written, you know? And then um, there's a bunch of other stuff that I'd like, I was writing, I was, I want, I was writing them as stories thinking like, yeah, I'll make a book, but how the fuck do you make a book? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I was like, oh, I'll just turn it into a song instead. I'll just turn it into a rap instead. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then, yeah, this guy just emailed me, then just like asking if whatever, if, I, if I've been writing, I showed him, showed him a bunch of stuff. And he was like, you should keep going, man. Um, you know, whatever. And then I'll get back to you. And then I just kind of like, I continued doing what I was doing, working on this, this one song. Uh, Swan Songs, sorry, I fucking forgot the name of my own book. You know what I mean? It's, there's a book, there's a movie called Swan Song, isn't it? it which my book gets uh, overshadowed by motherfuckers. But, the search engines will do that. Yeah, they, SEO. Yeah, you just got shout yeah. out to Office Magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. But, uh, started started with a guy emailing me basically, and um, yeah, I just forgot about it. Like a year later, out the blue, he emails you back. Goes, oh, sorry. This Carl Neville, his name is, by the way. Uh, shout out to Carl yeah, Neville. Yeah. This is Carl from Re Repeater Books, yeah, I'm assuming. So he's an author on Repeater Books. Okay. He works closely with the with the publisher, Tariq Goddard. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, basically he was he just hit me up, hit me back a year later. Like, oh yeah, um, sorry, I've been editing a book. It was like a whole year, you know what I mean? I was like, oh, I fucking forgot about this guy, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's like, you, you've been working any more on this year? I was like, yeah, I've been kind of working flat out, you know what I mean? And then he was like, um, I in, I spoke to the the publisher Tarek, 
uh, about it and he was kind of familiar with your music. He was excited by it. So he wants to just take over now. Good. And he was like, I only just, I was like, oh, cool. So then I hit him up then and then, yeah, man, they were just like straight away. Like, yeah, you, uh, we it. love what, you, mm-hmm. what you're what doing, whatever. Just keep going. Send us it when it's ready. Jeez. And then, yeah, um, that was it. Like, I, I didn't look for a publisher. They just, they found me. You know what I, I mean? Was, I was going to say, would you have, do you think you'd ever have done that had you not like, I mean, received that initial email? See, it's a weird one, isn't it? Because I was writing anyway, mm. but maybe not like, because it's yeah. not like music. Like, I would have always made music whether someone came and found me or not, you know what I mean? But I couldn't say whether I would have honestly, like, I'd have found a way to put it out because I probably wouldn't have. Mm. I, I, mm. I'm not really like, a, I'm not like a networking guy, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? I, I wouldn't know how to, I wouldn't know the first thing about finding a publisher or, and then even if I did, I wouldn't even want to speak to them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I can't be asked. Like. So I don't know, man. Maybe not, like, maybe not, to be honest. Right. So shout out to Repeater yeah, yeah. Um, for just, like, you know. Yeah, sick, man. No, it, it's cool, man. Like, like, I think, obviously, you've got a, uh, a lot of fans of your uh, sort of um, your albums and stuff. So I guess there's a direct correlation there yeah. where a lot of people are going to be like, oh, shit, Lee Scott's written a book. Like, yeah, yeah. I want that. Yeah. Um, how much of the book... Obviously, uh, bl- barring the uh, like sci-fi, uh, like nature, how much of it is <laughs> a little bit I mean, autobi- autobiographical? Yeah, so you know, it, it, it there what I, right? What I did was the the concept was I kind of like wrote a timeline of my real life, and I was just like, how can I like ch- like take this somewhere else? Like, I basically I didn't want to approach it like like an autobiography. I wanted to approach it like how I would approach like um, writing rap songs, but back when I first started. Mm. Cause I would, th- uh, we used to go like we had n- different names for the style that we of rap we were doing, but it was kind of like, I don't even know, man, like an exaggerated, like fantastic version of what you know of reality or whatever. So that's what how I wanted to do it. I want it was quite hard because I I kind of like don't really rap the same way that I rapped when I first came out or whatever. But I wanted to do it like kind of like that because it's kind of based in the early. 2000s you know what I mean I don't ever say it in a book but mm. I, I, you can kind of tell you, you through like tell, a, you know, through a few of like MySpace and I want to say like I mean? the social media you're <laughs> using like the 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 model of laptop yeah, yeah, like yeah. the shoes you're wearing exactly, little things like that exactly but uh, yeah man um, yeah so I kind of like wrote like a rough very very rough sort of timeline oh yeah then I went to here and I went there and I done this and, and then I just kind of like mashed it all together you know what I mean mm. and then took it elsewhere basically like I, like I would have done on songs back then. Sick. You know what I mean? There's like, in all honesty, there's about a thousand ideas in the book. I just wanted to put them all in. Like I would have done. I mean, on, a lot of the time it'll go on like then. a tangent into yeah, like yeah. a mini story of itself, yeah, right? Yeah, because yeah. you're kind of writing within the writing. Yeah, so exactly. It's, so that, it's that was the thing. idea. Yeah, it was kind of like, the idea, uh, the, the, the initial idea was simply that it's about a guy trying to make an album and he doesn't manage to make the album, but the album sp- um, spills out and becomes a book. Mm. That was the idea, but it's, it, that's what I'd started with. And then mm-hmm. I was just like, let's see how far I can take this and how many crazy places I can take this, how many doors I can Sick. open, whatever. You know Mad. what I mean? But yeah. And um, are people still able to buy it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still available. They, they just, the thing about books is they just press them. They just make more. <laughs> they just make more, man. And I think it was, it was I'm already- i wait for a reissue or nothing. No. I'll tell you one thing. I sold way more books than I ever sold records. Like, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. Like, as in, because you know, I mean, it makes sense though, isn't it? Because like, not everyone has a timetable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not everyone listens to, you know, but everyone can- Mm. Not everyone can read, you know what I mean? <laughs> can you read? <laughs> I, I, wouldn't like to, I wouldn't like to say on air. Not on air. I wouldn't like air. to call I mean, myself I can out, barely out, read, out loud. To be yeah, honest with yeah. you, I can barely read. Uh, I think this is the first book I ever read, to be honest with you, man. But uh, yeah, like... Do you, uh, do you plan to do any more, like writing yeah, going Yeah, forward? I mean, they already paid me to write. Oh, <laughs> mad. Sick. I, I, I'm, I'm, so I'm working on something now, but uh, I've... Kind of never, I never stopped writing when I finished this. Mm. I didn't even, if I'm being honest, I didn't even want to finish this. Like mm. when, you know, they, they gave it to me. I think I like, ed- I pissed them off to be honest. Cause I mean, they, they were nice. So shout them out for, <laughs> <laughs> for dealing with me. But I think in the last week I just re-edited the entire book and they were like, we're going to have to like get, cause you know, you have to have like, you have editors, yeah, like- but what the, what the editors do, they don't change your words. They don't, like they don't change the story or help me write it or anything like this. What you do is you kind of submit your like a transcript or whatever. And then they just go through and just be like, 
bro, you haven't used a full stop here for like <laughs> 10 <laughs> fucking pages. You know what I mean? It's like, what's wrong with you, man? Like, you know. That's like Matt when he goes through the uh, yeah. Offy Mag, to be fair. Yeah, Sticking a bunch of those little dots, yeah. the little two dots yeah. and yeah. all that yeah. shit. You know? yeah. getting, real, getting real techie with yeah, it. Yeah. Then, Hyphens all over the place. They just kind of like make, two it, dots, make it a little bit more readable. But I think um, the publisher, Tarek, he found like people who specialize in mm. weirdos, basically. <laughs> it's like, edit this, but don't edit it too much. You know what I mean? <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, man, I could literally speak yeah. about y you and this book for a lot longer. But time's moving. We've got an extra of like 15 minutes, apparently, according to producer Ed. So that's all, obviously lovely news. Cool. Got that um, new to me, to you. To me, yeah, because we've got a little new to me like section mm. where we'll be playing a few records. Um, but that's 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 to come after I've uh, l l finished a little chit chat because I, I guess I've got one more question really you've been quiet-ish musically for yeah. about a year which for you is quite rare isn't it yeah. Um, yeah so what have you got coming what are you sat on and uh, I don't literally mean the stool yeah. the rare kind with the <laughs> fragile stickers <laughs> the fragile on it stickers I mean are like, metaphorically yeah yeah Still, like, you know what like I mean? Metaphorically, what is Lee Scott sat on I mean, right now? Phone in with your <laughs> answer. <laughs> uh, man, I, 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 yeah, I've been trying to, I've just been doing a lot of like, I've just been making beats and stuff, like, you know what I mean? Doing a lot of like production stuff. Um, uh, and it's just, if I'm being honest, it just, it's take, I decided one day that it's like, that I was repeating myself and I was just like, oh, I can't, I'm, you know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, like to the point where it was like, I've rhymed those two words before. Like, that's how bad I got. And I was like, ah, fuck, scrap this whole verse. Like, mm. you know, and came a bit, because I used to just like, kind of, I used to work on the idea that like, if I've made it and I liked it in those five minutes, it must be good. Because mm. why would I make it? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I would kind of like, a, a bit of agency. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, ah, man, I can't, can't even be asked now. And, and then also, man, if I'm being, you know, like I used to do the, one verse tracks and all this and like mm -hmm. do these little joints but it's kind of every like as a whole like rap music the sort of underground rap music that, that i kind of like or search out i mm. mean i like all types of rap music but you know that like at the core that like type of shit that i will seek out mm -hmm. it's kind of the joints have got smaller and smaller and smaller and shout out bisque like to the point <laughs> where it's like 15 <laughs> seconds a song and all that you know yeah, what i mean yeah. i was just like yeah i uh <clears throat> I just want to maybe like put a little bit more into it, keep the project short, but you know, bulk it all up, or whatever. Okay. Um, and then I was in no rush, man. You Sick. know what I mean? And I know, and also, I'm mad, usually I'm mad impatient. Mm. I don't know whether it's because of the book that's like t taught me a little bit of patience, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, maybe. So I don't know, man. Like, yeah, I've just been taking my time. I've remixed like the same song like six times, you know what I mean? Maybe mm -hmm. more. Like, some guys mixing, doing the final mixes for me. <laughs> bro, I, I must have sent him the same. So I'm, I'm like, yo, I've tweaked every, I've remixed everything. Send it, send it back to him. He's like, oh, bro, all right, cool. I have no idea where we're up to now, but that's what I've been doing. I've just been working on a bunch of stuff, doing a load of collaborations with some American uh, friends, and mm. just, yeah, just you know what I mean, just come like I don't know, stockpiling a bunch of music, man. Uh, also, I'm just doing self-produced stuff basically at the moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sick. Trying to work with some obscure guys, like heroes of mine, you know what I mean? Cool. Sick. Yeah, like I think in the last, like, I mean, it, it's been happening for a long time, but um, I think because of the dope releases recently, um, mm. like the uh, Black White Girl Wasted uh, album, which you're on, um, mm -hmm. I think that's sort of maybe put it to the front of my brain a little bit more, but I'm seeing a lot more of the, sorry to use the term, inverted UK hip-hop artists. Yeah which is a, a term I can chat, chat and chat on. Um, and I'm sure you can too. Yeah. But I'm seeing a lot of them kind of working with American artists and it's like, it's kind of, it's nice to see and it seems to be done in a very organic way that would happen whether or not they were from yeah. England or not. It's not done as like a novelty or anything like that. So like when it comes to kind of working with US artists, like how, how do you go about that? Is it just a case of people that you listen uh, to? or? Yeah, I mean... I mean, like I say, man, I'm not very, I'm really like terrible at like networking and stuff mm. like this or hitting people up even. But, uh, you know, I, I'll only hit people up if I know that I like, the, I know someone that knows them or something like that. And, I, and I, obviously I proper like them or whatever. Um, or like even like mostly to be honest with you, like um, Heems, shout out Heems, um, like I'm, who I met in London. 
uh, he used to be in a group Das Racist. Mm. Yeah, fuck and uh, he's teams. just like he's just basically like a man of the people. I I tell him he's a man of the people, but like as we like yo, do you know this guy or whatever? Like we just done a joint. I'll tell you. I don't know if you you might not even know this guy, but he was called Cool Calm Pete, and he had like this album out in like the early two thousands, like maybe two thousand five. He just put out one album and then just bounced, like you know what I mean. But he was kind of like. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't, it, it sounds insulting when you say it, but he was kind of like a backpack rap underground legend yeah. type of guy, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Um, so I was just like, I, and I seen Heem, Heems had said something about him online somewhere. So me and Heems done a joint, and I was like, bro, have you got, is Cool Calm Pete still rapping? And he just like texts me back like 10 minutes later, like with a, with like a screenshot of, of Pete just being like, yeah, I'm down, I'm going to do it right now. Type <laughs> thing. I was like, oh shit, all right, cool. But that's basically like <laughs> stuff like that, you know what I mean? Um, and there's a few other guys that, you know, I won't say yet, but uh, who are just through guys that I know, producers that, I mean, you know what it is? It's like, if you, I've been doing it for so long. I think that eventually people just, you end up just knowing people. Mm. I don't know. You mm. know what I mean? Uh, it's no like, I'm not really, I'm not hitting no emails. Just being like, no. rap with me, bro. Here's my demo. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, and also, another thing, just real quick, is I think like a lot of like, um, the Americans are, they're, they're releasing vinyl for European companies. Mm. A lot of a lot of like uh, different record. Uh, I don't even know what they are. They're like vinyl only record labels. Mm. Even dope, like, you know, like dope, they, yeah. I mean, a lot of US stuff, dope, right? Yeah. Shout out to Purist. Yeah. But yeah, they like. I think a lot of the guys are you know looking to Europe and mm. stuff for them for them quick payouts. You know what I'm saying? Sick. Yeah. yeah. All power to them. Yeah, power yeah, to yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Mark. Um, cool. We got uh, one final uh, like segment of the show, which is called "New to Me." Oh, here we go. New to you, Matt? Or you, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, so I'll try we again. Try a, again. Like, chuckle brothers. We'll, thing. we we'll fix it. Everything. We'll fix it in post. Um, new to me. So new to you. <laughs> to you. To me. To you. To me. To me. We'll get better. Right? It's the first episode. Um, so yeah, this is a part where. We play something that's new to us. It doesn't have to be a new release. It can be something that we've found recently. Yeah. Um, this is Matty's ready to I'm, go. I'm, so I'm, I'm going to let him. I've been He's trying to play this record all day. Ready and raring. Matt, what so have this you is, found? What this is, is a new little, to you? Uh, a little charity shop number. No, it's not a charity shop number at What all. did you just call Rare Kind? Charity I didn't shop. get it from Rare Kind. Oh, oh was this, this not is, the No, it's got? a car boot sale. Oh, car sorry. boot sale number. Uh, 25p. You've never heard Lisa Stansfield? No, I ha just not this song. Not this song. Okay, cool. So this was a new song to me. I don't think that camera's off now, so I'll do it to this one. There you go. So this is from that her 1992 sport. album, So Natural. Um, she's from Manchester originally, and uh, she starred in an episode of Agatha Christie, uh, Marple, which I found quite interesting. Um, and yeah, this is Lisa Stansfield with a little bit of heaven. That was a suspect sounding shoe sound, that. Did anyone hear that? Yeah, I heard a squeaky shoe. Someone farted before the record. <laughs> I got my company flow at Funk Crusher Plus. I've Tony Broke for 80 quid. Shout out, Tony Broke. Uh, that was Lisa Stanfield there, courtesy of Brick Cell Phone. That one's new to him via a car boot sale. Sticking on the bargain theme, to be honest. Here's one that cost me a quid. I got this from, I think it was from Age UK on London Road, Brighton. Uh, it's by a blokey called Gino Washington, who uh, was pretty well known in the 80s, but essentially, right, he, he's, from the, he's from the US, but he was uh, like stationed in East Anglia as part of the American Air Force uh, in the 60s. And he was going to like loads of gigs and he got into like UK soul and was in a band called the Ram Jam Band or something like that. Yeah, you know about them, yeah. And they, they had hits. They had hits in the 60s and the 70s. And then um, he went off the radar for about 10, 15 years because he was studying hypnotism at uh, <laughs> university. And he came back in the 80s and he put out music like this, which is my money, your money. Really moving like Wikipedia today. Uh, yeah, I've done my research. <laughs> Let's get into it. Gino. My money, your money, my money is still the best in town. Never let you die. 
There you go. That was Gino Washington. I enjoyed that. That was no, I wasn't always coming out of speakers <laughs> behind me, but that's that's the beauty of live radio, yeah. live on platform B, live from rare kind. One hundred five point five of them. Um, it's been a lovely show. Um, that one was Gino Washington. That one was new to me. Not the name of the song. Yeah, I like that. It, it just happens to be new to me. Um, Lee Scott. What record is new to you? Um, I mean, it, this is so new to me that I've never heard it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's about to be new to all of us. It's another one from that Cook the Books because uh, I already played my new to me song earlier on by accident. You know what I mean? So this is what I can only describe as a. Uh, Do you know what? Underground I'm playing the one called. I'm playing pop. A, yeah, I'm playing a song called Up and Smoke, but maybe there's a. Uh, do I want to play that? <laughs> there's so many good track titles on this thing. <laughs> Should I play it? Where I did mean, you say you got on. it? Finland. Yeah, Finland, I think. <laughs> Just on uh, like Discogs or something? Or? Yeah, yeah, Discogs, yeah. yeah. The only play, all of them were, like, whatever it was, whatever Scandinavian country it was in, it was, uh, the, it was there. only there. So it just, just how much? Did, was how, it a lot I, I mean, not? literally only there. Nah. How, was it expensive? Nah, no, not yeah. really. It was only like 20 quid or something. I know what I'm doing. I get out of here. Cook the books. <laughs> yeah, but let's let's wait in, until we hear this first <laughs> before we commit to any... Uh... There we go. See that? <laughs> this is the same tune. <laughs> oh, <it's going> to <laughs> <laughs> the title, the title was, was so well, attractive. It was that's one so we'd funny because so basically that's the tune I played earlier. Yeah, I yeah, told yeah. you I didn't remember the track titles. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go through them. All right, so up and smoke. I was right though. Yeah, let's get it. Say that was a classic. <laughs> All right, you know what? Then let's just flip it around. If you just don't mind. No. Because uh, there's a better. <laughs> Rich men don't. Yeah, I'm don't trying to find out. What do to, rich men we not? We need to find out. We do right, need to find, find out. out. Alright, here we go. Alright. Ooh. <laughs> Off you, man. Oh man, you should have waited until the mic <laughs> was on to drop that perler, man. Yeah, Lee I don't want to say it again because it will seem unnatural. <laughs> Lee just uh, <laughs> suggested playing every single record <laughs> in Rare Kind, <laughs> seeing if we can like, l- like break some kind of podcast. It'll be like, a, a, have you ever, there's, a, there's an amazing documentary <laughs> called Hand on a Hard Body. Have you ever yeah, heard yeah, of it? Yeah, I've yeah, seen that, man. It's yeah. so sick. So it's forget so sick. Hand on a Hard Body, you know what I'm saying? We'll yeah, do the, yeah. re- play every record yeah. in Rare Kind. I wonder what Ewan would think if know. he turned up tomorrow for work and we're well, still we'll here. Well, we'll be here a lot longer than just tomorrow. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, me. Well, we've only got 1,000 records to go. That'll be like a week. Fortunately, that is the end of this particular broadcast. Uh, and, uh, that was um, that was Lee Scott's uh, new, to, new to Me, and that's yeah, Cooked the Books. Yeah, gem that I've been accused of being from to, uh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need to pra- We do need yeah. to practice it. Yeah. We'll uh, and that was men that. don't. Should but I, he's still uh, not sure what they should don't I do. Correct myself now, or should we? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Lee. Would you like to yeah, correct? Yeah. So it's not. Uh, it's not from the Finland, which <laughs> beautiful country in itself, of course. But they're actually all of the copies of this record are in Italy. Which e- is every single copy. Yeah. So like, strange. Not a single one left in Liverpool. One, yeah, yeah. You know which is in rare cut. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Steal it back. <laughs> if you want to hear more of that international Scouse pop, you can listen back to the whole radio show, YouTube, Mixcloud, The Works. Um, you cool. don't want to miss it. Thanks a lot. Thanks to everyone who tuned in. Thanks for Lee for coming down, man. Yeah, man. Well, good Much man appreciated. anytime, man. Um, you know, maybe we'll see you when we start whatever our newest uh, adventure is. <laughs> yep. We'll just get you as the, as yep. the first thing yep. on everything. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right, um, cool. So, yeah. Yeah, give it like five years or so. Um, uh, other than that, if you want to find out more about Offy Mag, you probably head to our website. There's always some bits on there for you to buy. You can head to our Patreon. Oh, yeah. Patreon's forward slash Offy Mag. Only fans. And give <laughs> slash Offy Mag. Yeah. <laughs> You'll see Brick's cell phone doing all sorts on yeah. there. He's sharing <laughs> more than just obscure pop records. I'll tell you that much. These cheeks do not lie. Um, anyway. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Let, let us finish on at least got track. This one's me o'clock. Makes one sense. One of my personal favourites. Um, yeah, off you make. Off you egg. Weather 
really know what the right choice is What if life's pointless Wondering if there's any point in wondering And would it matter if you figured it out Regardless if you're not Awfully mag